So let's break down what just happened in Pogo Stick. Um, we're going to need to break down all of these riffs literally piece by piece, and you'll need to learn them slowly and build them up to speed. I'm purposely keeping the tempos pretty low on uh, on these riffs. Once you get them together, you're going to want to uh, you know fly right through them because they do sound pretty neat when you start when you start really playing. <laughs> It's cool stuff, but it's no fun to try to learn it at that speed, and it's no fun to try to watch someone play it while you're trying to learn it. So we're going to keep the tempos medium to slow so you can actually get these. Okay, so what's happening here is we're using many of the techniques that we just went through. And right now I'm using the pick. Um, so no thumb yet. We're just going to use the pick. So the first thing I'm doing is striking an open E string and hammering on here at the fifth fret A. And then I got a palm punch. And then I'm going to come uh, with that palm punch. Remember, I told you when I do those, I uh, make sure that my second finger that's going to do a pop, so this would be a P2, is going to land on the string that's about to pop. So that's going to be the fourth string. So I have the hammer on, the punch, and the aiming of the fourth string to get the pop. Notice the pop was percussive or muted. I didn't fret anything. So right after that, I'm going to come back with a punch, PP. -p. And from there, I'm going to repeat that A. Um, one of the neat things um, is that a strong tone like the root and the lowest one at that is on the second 16th. Because of the way this technique is, it makes some of these strong tones fall on these offbeat 16ths, creating a lot of syncopation and uh, making the riff sound that much more interesting. So from there... I go like this. So I pick that A note on the second sixteenth of uh, beat two, and I come in and I pop a fretted note this time, a fifth fret G, the flat seven, and hammer on into uh, the seventh fret, the root. Okay, now moving on. What I did is I got more punches and more pops in there. Um, so it's, it's almost creating this like conveyor belt of uh, different, different uh, rhythmic tonalities. So I did another percussive pop after my hammer on and another punch. Let's take it really slow. Okay. And what's gonna happen here, a little trick of the wrist to get, I do a hammer on from flat seven to one again, and then on the one, just flick my wrist to get a really quick double pick on the root. So that's the first half. That's uh, bars one through four. Um, and then what I'm gonna do from there is I moved up a minor third uh, to C. Very similar, but some differences. One of the key differences is I can't start on an open E. I'm doing something in C. I mean, I could, but uh, we're trying something different here. I'm going to start on a flat 7 of C, the B flat, and I'm playing B flat to C as a hammer-on. So instead of the hammer-on from the 5th to the root, as I did with E to A, I'm going flat 7 to the root. So I'm doing my hammer-on, my punch, and my pop, but I'm hammering on from flat 7 to 1, and my pop is not percussive as it was here. It's, it's the octave. So hammer on, punch, pop. From there, the riff stays the same. We play that four times, and then we back down to the A four times. We get back there. Uh, careful when you're going from C to A. You might tend to rush here to here. Don't come in and fire through that one after you get done doing the C part of the, uh, of the riff. So we have four bars of A, four bars of C, four bars of A. The only difference really here is how we're playing the beginning as opposed to Okay, so remember, take it very, very, very slow, especially with this one, because this is the first one. 
Um, next segment here, we're going to check out some variations that we can do with it and just give you some of some ideas of where you can go with this because there's, there's many. <laughs> 